Good morning, folks. We've basically got the whole range of topics most critical to observers today, starting right here with the brightness incoming on our star as we head to spaceweathernews.com, finding the last day on the sun with bright sunspot groups trailing behind the dark coronal hole. While solar wind is still calm, awaiting that coronal hole stream, the solar flares have begun to nudge back due to those spots which really developed overnight to be worth a minor watch to start the day today. The coronal hole solar wind is about 24 hours away at this point, could arrive as early as this evening. Meanwhile, we know that the seismicity comes back when these coronal holes face Earth, and the third six-pointer in a row nails one of the QuakeWatch.net red alert stars. That's been Vanuatu, you remember the last one in Chile, and now Indonesia. Going to the weather. Shouldn't be shocking what the top story is today. Record cold from the Midwest now creeping into New England. Not going to stop and we'll come back to this cold in a moment. But first, let's go to India where a hailstorm was followed up by some record snow in the region, followed by a few record cold marks broken especially in the Northern Territories. Last, let the spheric notice that the Colombian government has issued an alert on the Nevado del Ruiz volcano after two quakes an hour have begun hitting the feed chambers below. Folks, this is one of my favorite animations ever, the inner shell structure of a luminous blue variable star. Variable stars come in different forms, luminous, cepheid, and cataclysmic. They just found a new one of those last types, reported by the Royal Astronomical Society, but available for free on archive at the link below. Veteran observers have heard it said here for years that the thousands to tens of thousands of dwarf planets past Pluto are worth more than a dozen giant planet nines in terms of orbital disruption. We just don't need a planet nine. Well, it's great to see that confirmation coming now from Cambridge. Frustrating to see it reported as a show-stopping revelation here in 2019. So let's go back to that record cold, as promised. The Japanese Meteorological Agency released this graphic of the sudden stratospheric warming that destroyed the polar vortex this year in the north. This is what has been causing the snow events in Europe so far in January and what has just begun in the eastern United States and will continue for the next few weeks. Interestingly, at the same time as the sudden stratospheric warming at the polar region, just south over the Netherlands, a record low stratospheric temperature caused only the third recorded sighting of these polar type clouds in the country's history. By the way, heat spikes at the polar region in winter while surrounding zones get colder is part of the reason that it is more about electricity than sunlight the higher up into the atmosphere you go. And now for the top story. Aerosols from our pollution account for three-fourths of the cloud albedo variation which we learned last year is far greater than in all climate models. But today, that makes a bigger problem for them. Those aerosols supposedly warm the planet. They're cooling in the clouds, though, much more than we knew. So they need an explanation for the levels of temperature change seen over the last few decades. I do indeed submit that the grand solar maximum last century is indeed the answer which has also been our contention for years, and the best way to learn about that is the way some students currently do. Our layman's textbook, called the student's favorite and easiest to understand textbook they have at college. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org, we posted a little double gem deeper look on Earth's catastrophe cycle and the solar micronova. Both Billy and Dr. Dunning seem to agree this could be brand new evidence of the event. If the members agree in the comment section beneath that video, we'll toss it in the YouTube series too, this is your chance to get involved. By the way, I may or may not be on the last hour of Glenn Beck's radio show today discussing the pole shift, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. We've got your wind maps, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.05 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.